boys and girls and welcome to today Wednesday day five of our readings and the story today is called get away from false worship this time we go to verse eight in the 14th chapter in the book of Revelation and the scripture reading says then the second angel followed the first angel and said she is destroyed the great city of Babylon is destroyed. And today's reading will be read by Balawea. Hello, my name is Walia and I'm a Brixis presenter. And today I'll be talking to you about getting away from false worship. Now, the big question for today is, why is it important that we get away from false worship? Now, the reason why, that we should get away from false worship is so that when we do, because when we do get into false worship, it is damaging our relationship with God and it's drifting us more, further away from him. But if we stay away from false worship and we're choosing to follow Jesus, that's the best decision that you can ever make to choose to follow him and keep your eyes focused on Jesus instead of focusing your mind on things that are ungodly. Now, the Bible text I'll be referring to today is Revelation 14, verse 8, which says, Then the second angel followed the first angel and said, She is destroyed. The great city of Babylon is destroyed. Now, today I'll be telling you a story about finding the truth in Tonga. Now, Asipeli lived on the Polynesian island of Tonga in the South Pacific Ocean. That's where he'd chosen to follow the religion of his father, but now he had questions. A few weeks after two a few weeks earlier, two men had arrived on Tonga and began holding religious meetings. Curious, Asipeli and his friend Manu attended. They were shocked to learn ideas from the Bible that they'd never heard about. Asipeli and Manu went to the meetings every night. When the meetings ended, they both knew a lot more about the Bible. But one question now haunted them. Which is the true church? Now, one day, Asipeli made an announcement. A big ship is going to arrive in port tomorrow from Australia. I will go to the ship and ask God to show me someone who can answer my question. Which is the true church? At the port, Asipeli watched as travellers left the big ship. Finally, he saw a man he felt God had chosen for him to speak with. Are you a Christian, sir? asked Asipeli. Startled, the man said, why, yes, I am a Christian. I'm a Baptist. Why do you ask? Quickly, the eager Tong Tongan asks his question. Can you tell me which is the true church? Now, this passenger had been taking Bible studies for the past few months and had been learning Bible truth. Right to this address, he told Asipeli. They will tell you which is the true church. Asipeli found a pencil and wrote down the address the man gave him. Eventually, he began taking Bible studies through the mail. Asipeli learned about God's true church, one that believed in Jesus and kept all the Ten Commandments, including the Seventh-day Sabbath. Soon Asipeli and Manu were baptised into the Seventh-day Adventist Church. It's amazing how God leads when we invite him into our life. And I'd like you to think about this. Have you ever followed someone or something that led you in the wrong direction? What would you do differently? Do you have friends or relatives who belong to a church that doesn't totally follow Bible truths? How does this make you feel? And the song that I'll be singing for you today is entitled, In You Alone. up with 
with your hand, you give me faith and I will put my hope in you alone, in you alone. I will put my hope in you, Lord, you alone are everything I need, my hope is in Day five. I have another question. Have you ever followed someone or something that led you in the wrong direction? What would you do differently if that should happen the next time? We went like a few years ago when I followed my friends into doing something because they were kind of like a row against my other friend and um, I was a bit stuck so I decided to go with the flow and kind of like because I was really confused so I just decided to go with the flow but then I really regretted my decision but then the next time it happened I knew what to do and I was able to change it and I didn't yeah I didn't get stuck because I knew what I, what the sensible and the right thing was to do and I was able to I was able to we were able to fix the situation and I was able to fix the situation because I wasn't, I tried my best not to be as involved in it. So, yeah. Well, if you are led into doing something wrong with your friends, I'd say I would not do it again and try and fix it up. So my friends won't do it again and nobody will do it. Um, I had a friend from, this is from my personal experience, but I had a friend who, um, long story short, I ended up losing a, a few of my friends and not only um, my relationship with God, but I sort of fixed it up and I have my friends back and um, I also have a really good relationship with God. If my friends led me into something wrong, I'd pray to God for him to lead me on the right track and for him to give me the right inspiration to do the right things.
Do you have friends or relatives who belong to a different church who is not a Christian or doesn't totally follow Bible truth? How does this make you feel? Yes, I do have friends and relatives who belong to a different church. It makes me feel sad, but I hope they will one day believe. I would say, yeah, I definitely do have friends that are maybe not Seventh Day Adventist and are not, and are not friends. Um, sorry, and are not Christians. Um, it doesn't make. I would say it doesn't make me feel uncomfortable because I feel that when you make friends, you just make friends. So a lot of my friends, yeah, we don't talk about it as much, but it's kind of like in. In some cases, it might feel you make you feel uncomfortable when they start talking about stuff that you might ne not necessarily um, agree with them. But I'd say, generally speaking, I don't think of it as much, and it doesn't as much bother me um, that they're not following the religion that I follow. But I would want to try and get them into following the religion that I follow. Um, as for me. Even though I do go to a Christian school, they know that I'm a Christian and they know that I'm a Seventh-day Adventist. And um, I used to not be the only one that was a Seventh-day Adventist in my school. But, um, but now, because the class above us have now moved to secondary, I'm the only Seventh-day Adventist in my school. And my class knows that and my friends respect that. So they don't have their parties on Saturdays or anything like that. So, and um, when there's stuff that I don't agree with, I'll tell them the Christian version and they probably might not bring that subject up again. Sometimes it does get uncomfortable though. Um, like being the only Christian and like, but I can almost educate them and they do know quite a bit about the Bible now because um, I can help them bit by bit, but sometimes it does get a bit uncomfortable. Um, so in my school, I have loads that, that don't follow um, the Christian, the Christian um, faith and one um one of my friends, as I said, they don't follow they don't follow the Christ like the Christian way, but one of them is my bestie and even though they still even though they still don't um worship God, you, you, you can still be their friends, but they also should respect you because you're you came um because you should also um they should also respect you because the Christian faith is the right way and I do have a, a, a friend, he's not seven day Adventist, but he still goes to church, but not on the right day. I think I should respect that, that he believes in Jesus, but doesn't go to church on the right day. But, but I think I should also respect my faith and do what I think Jesus would do. I have friends that are Muslims and Catholics and do not believe in in the white truth. I am very sad that they that they do not have the correct faith and they do not believe in the white things. And that was Rue, your Brits Kids presenter, presenting Question Time. Sing like me. 
Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray that, Lord, that we'll be able to follow you and stay away from false worship and things that are untrue, Lord, about you, Lord. And I pray that, Lord, that we may continue to follow you and that, Lord, others may get to know about you. And through this week of prayer, Lord, I pray that others will be blessed and that we'll be able to share this with our friends and our family and that those of our friends who don't know about you, that, Lord, that they may come to know you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground. Firm through the face of storm and storm What heights of love, what depths of peace When fears are still, when striving cease My comforter, my all in all Here in the love of Christ I stand In Christ alone, He took on flesh, fullness of God in help was made. This gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones He came to save. Till on that cross, as Jesus died, the There in the ground, his body lay, light of the world by darkness rain, then bursting forth in glorious day, up from the grave he rose again, and as he stands in victory, since Christ has for me, for I am His, and He is mine, bought with the precious blood of Christ. No guilt in life, no fear in death, this is the power of Christ in me. From life's first cry to final breath, Jesus commands my destiny. The power of hell, the sting of man, can ever part me from this hand. Till he returns, the heart of me home, in the power of Stand. No power of hell, no skin of man Can ever the blood be from his hand Till he returns, the curse will hold